All right, let's uh, let's dive into something pretty fascinating, shall we? We're heading to Belfast today, virtually, of course, to explore, well, the Titanic experience and everything Titanic related in that city. You guys sent in some really interesting stuff, like that visitor's guide I saw from Love, Ireland. And honestly, I think you'll be pretty surprised by just how much Belfast has to offer for anyone, well, fascinated by the Titanic. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Most people, when they think Titanic, they immediately think Southampton you know, where it's set sail from. But what's really interesting is that Belfast is where it was actually built and the city's connection to the ship. It runs way deeper than just, you know, construction. I got to admit, I was surprised too when I realized it wasn't built in Southampton. So so why is Belfast considered like the true birthplace of the Titanic? It all comes down to the shipyards, really, of Harland and Wolf, this company. They were giants, absolute giants back in the early 1900s. And they're Belfast shipyards. They were a hub, like a center, for innovation and industry. They employed, gosh, thousands of skilled workers. And the Titanic, it was their, like, pinnacle, their crowning achievement. It was a real symbol of just how dominant Belfast was in shipbuilding. So it's not just about the ship itself, right? It's the whole, the entire shipbuilding world that thrived in Belfast, which makes it a much more authentic experience than, say, going to Southampton. Absolutely, yeah. When you visit the Titanic experience in Belfast, you're actually standing right on the ground, the very ground where it was built. Wow, okay, I'm starting to get it now. Like, I can almost picture it, you know, the huge cranes, those massive dry docks, just the scale of it all. And I love that the Titanic experience itself is actually located right in the former Harlan and Wolf shipyard. It's amazing, isn't it? The setting, it really brings history to life. The Titanic experience, they use all these interactive displays, multimedia presentations, and they've recreated parts of the ship. It's incredibly detailed. It's all designed to completely immerse you in the experience. Oh, I bet. You know, in your notes, you mentioned that you were really interested in the social dynamics on board the Titanic. Oh, right. Yeah. One of the things the Titanic experience does really well is you can walk through recreations of the cabins, like both the opulent first class ones, you know, all fancy, and then the cramped third class quarters. It gives you a real sense of just how different the experiences were between, well, the social classes on board. That must be incredible to actually see and feel that contrast like firsthand. And what about the shipyard ride? What makes that so special? Well, it's not just a ride. It's more like a time machine, really, using virtual reality. It uh -huh. takes you all the way back to 1910. You're suddenly right there in the middle of the Harland and Wolf shipyard. It's bustling. You can see the sights and hear the sounds, even like feel the atmosphere as the Titanic is being built right there. Whoa, okay, now that's what I call immersive. And you know, speaking of immersive experiences, I have to admit, I didn't know much about the SS Nomadic before reading your research. It's amazing that we can still experience this, like this tender ship today, especially knowing it had a connection to the Titanic's, well, final moments. The SS Nomadic is a real hidden gem. And you're right, its connection to the Titanic is, well, quite poignant. It was built by the same company as the Titanic, the same company. And it was the very last tender to transfer passengers to the Titanic before it, well, before it sailed from Cherbourg in France. And the amazing thing is today it's been beautifully restored. Yeah. It's docked right beside the Titanic experience. Yeah. And visitors can actually walk its decks and explore its interior. It's all been so well preserved. It's just incredible, isn't it? Something that played such a small role in the whole like grand scheme of the Titanic's voyage but it can feel so significant. Absolutely, and what makes the Nomadic even more fascinating is that it survived, well, everything. Not only the events surrounded the Titanic sinking, but it went on to be a rescue vessel. During World War I, it's got this like incredibly rich history beyond just the Titanic. Okay, you've definitely got me intrigued. SS Nomadic's going right at the top of my list when I visit Belfast. Now, we can't talk about the Titanic experience without mentioning the Titanic dock and pump house, right? What makes those locations so important? Those places are where you really get a sense of the, just the sheer scale of the whole Titanic project. Yeah. Thompson Dry Dock, where they fitted out the Titanic, is one of the largest dry docks in the entire world. And the pump house, that housed the massive engines, steam-powered engines, yeah. that were needed to, well, operate the dry dock <laughs> and actually launch a ship the size of the Titanic. Wow, the power of those engines must have been something else. It's amazing to think about all the engineering feats, all those achievements from over a century ago that made, well, that made the construction and the launch of the Titanic even possible. Oh, absolutely. It was remarkable. A remarkable feat of engineering. And speaking of engineering, we should talk about the Harlan and Wolf drawing offices. The drawing offices, they're a real hidden gem, you know. You can stand in the very space where the Titanic was designed. 
You could almost like feel the presence of those architects and engineers pouring over the blueprints, dreaming up this, well, grand vessel. I bet. I bet. I read in one of the articles he sent over that they actually have some of the original design plans on display there in the drawing offices. Yeah, they do. They do. And when you look at those plans, you really start to understand the incredible amount of planning, the precision that went into every single detail of the Titanic. It's amazing to think that over a hundred years ago, they were able to like conceive of and execute such a complex project yeah. using only those hand-drawn blueprints. Imagine that. It really highlights the uh, the artistry, the craftsmanship of shipbuilding back then. It's almost like they were creating a piece of art as much as a mode of transportation. No wonder it continues to fascinate people, even to this day. Absolutely, absolutely. But speaking of fascinating, maybe we should shift gears a bit. Focus on the Titanic Belfast Museum itself. Yeah, let's dive in. I'm really eager to hear more about what makes the museum experience so unique. But what sets it apart, I think, is the way they approach storytelling. It's very immersive. Instead of just, you know, presenting artifacts and information like a traditional museum, Titanic Belfast actually takes you on a journey, starting with the ship's, well, conception and going all the way to its tragic end. So it's not just like a static display of objects then. It's more like an interactive experience that unfolds as you walk through. Exactly. You're not just observing. You're participating in the story. They use cutting-edge technology, you know, to create this multi-sensory experience. That's so cool. I'm picturing projections, sound effects, maybe even recreations of like the shipyard sounds and sights. You got it. You got it. They even incorporate smells, believe it or not, to help you really feel like you're there. Imagine the smell of like fresh lumber being sawed, you know, as they're building the ship mm -hmm. or the smell of coal smoke as the engine room comes to life. It's all designed to like transport you back in time. Now that's attention to detail. So, okay. You're walking through this museum, taking in the sights and sounds of the shipyard, then what? Well, as you move through the different galleries, the story, it kind of unfolds, and you're introduced to all these recreations of different parts of the Titanic. You mentioned earlier being interested in the social dynamics on board, right? Mm. Well, you can actually step inside a replica of a first-class cabin, complete with, like, plush furnishings and all these intricate details, and then you can compare that to the third-class cabin, which is much more cramped. It must be quite an experience to actually stand in those spaces, knowing how different the realities were for the passengers who, well, who occupied them. It really is, yeah. And it's not just about the luxurious side of things either. You can also explore recreations of, like, the engine rooms, the boiler rooms, mm -hmm. where you get a real sense of the power and the complexity of all the ship's machinery. It's amazing how they managed to capture both sides, you know the glamour and the grit of the Titanic story. What about actual artifacts from the ship, though? I read in that Love Ireland guide that they have some on display. Oh, yeah, they do. They, they do. Obviously, many artifacts are still, you know, the bottom of the ocean. But they have recovered a collection of items from the wreckage. Things like, you know, personal belongings, letters, photographs, pieces of the ship's structure, even items from the, well, the lavish dining service they had. Those must be incredibly moving to see in person to actually feel a connection to the people who held those objects, who lived and, and breathed on that ship. Oh, definitely. It adds a real layer of poignancy to the whole experience. Mm. You're reminded that behind all the grandeur, the technological marvel of it all, there were real people and their lives were forever changed by what happened. You know, speaking of the human element, I know you're really interested in the personal stories, you know, the passengers and crew. Does the museum touch upon that aspect at all? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Titanic Belfast does a fantastic job of weaving those individual stories into the larger narrative. You'll come across interactive displays with passenger profiles, letters they wrote, accounts from survivors. You really start to feel a connection with those individuals, you know, and understand the human impact of the tragedy. It's those little touches, isn't it? Those personal touches that really bring history to life and make it feel more relatable. You know, we talked about the shipyard ride earlier, and I have to admit, I'm really curious about it. What makes this virtual tour so special? Can you, like, paint a picture for me? Okay, so imagine this. You're being lifted high above the shipyard in a virtual crane. You can see all the activity below, workers swarming around this massive hull of the Titanic. Sparks are flying from welding torches. Hammers are clanging against steel. You can almost feel the energy, the excitement in the air as this magnificent ship starts to take shape. Wow, I can practically feel the ground shaking beneath me just listening to you describe it. I read somewhere that it's not just, you know, a passive viewing experience either. Visitors actually get to participate in the shipbuilding process during the ride. Oh, yeah, that's right. At certain points, you're given these interactive tasks to do. You might find yourself like 
virtually riveting pieces of the hull together. Yeah. Or, you know, testing the pressure in the ship's boilers. Okay, now that's really cool. I love that they found a way to make it interactive and, well, engaging. It's a really clever way to, you know, to learn about how complex ship welding is without actually having to get your hands dirty. But what really sets the shipyard right apart is just the level of immersion. These motion simulations, right. so you actually feel the sway of the crane as it lifts you up and the vibrations as the machinery rumbles below you. Wow, that's taking virtual reality to a whole new level. I can see why it's considered a highlight of the Titanic experience. It really is, yeah. yeah. It blends education and entertainment so well yeah. in a way that, that leaves a lasting impression. I'm sold, honestly. The museum, the shipyard ride, the artifacts. It sounds like the Titanic Belfast offers such a comprehensive and captivating experience. It does. It really does. But the experience goes beyond just the museum walls, you know. We're really just scratching the surface here of what Belfast has to offer when it comes to, well, exploring the Titanic's legacy. You know, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? Right next door to this, like, cutting-edge museum, you can experience something over a century old, the Titanic Dock and Pump House. It's that mix of the old and the new. That's what's got me excited about Belfast. So tell me more about those places. What's so special about them? Well, Thompson Dry Dock, where they fitted out the Titanic, that's a sight to behold just in itself. You can stand on the edge of this like massive dry dock and you can almost picture it, the Titanic towering above you as the workers, you know, swarmed around getting everything ready for her maiden voyage. I bet it sends shivers down your spine standing in that spot knowing what happened. What about the pump house then? The pump house is fascinating. A real example of Victorian engineering at its finest. It housed these huge engines, massive steam powered ones. They were crucial for operating the dry dock gates and the pumps. These engines controlled the water level so they could lower ships like the Titanic into the water. Wow, I can't even imagine the power those engines must have had, working day and night, getting the Titanic ready for her launch. Yeah, it was a real testament to the, the ingenuity, the skill of those engineers and workers back then. Speaking of ingenuity, we have to talk about the Harland and Wolf drawing offices, right? Those offices, that's where the Titanic was truly born, on paper at least. It blows my mind, honestly, to think that something as massive and complex as the Titanic started out as just lines on a page. So what can people actually see today in those drawing offices? Well, you can see the actual drawing boards, yeah. you know, where they meticulously sketched out every single detail from the grand staircase to the network of decks and cabins. When you look at those original blueprints, you really get a sense of like the artistry, the precision that went into designing the Titanic. It makes you appreciate the the human side of it all, you know? It wasn't just a ship, it was a masterpiece. Exactly, and for anyone who wants to like get a taste of what it was like to actually travel back then, there's the MV Titanic. Hold on, there's another Titanic. Not exactly, no, haha. Uh -huh. It's a White Star Line vessel from the same era. It's been beautifully restored and turned into a restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's not the Titanic, of course, but dining there gives you a glimpse of the, like the opulence, the grandeur of transatlantic yeah. travel in the early 1900s. Oh, I love that. Like stepping back in time, experiencing a little piece of history firsthand. Absolutely. And as you explore all these attractions, you'll find yourself immersed in the whole Titanic quarter. It's this vibe blend of old and new. You can walk along the Titanic slipways where it was built, see the great light, this massive lighthouse that used to guide ships into Belfast Loft. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Odyssey Complex, which is a modern entertainment hub. It's got everything, a concert arena, a cinema, even an indoor climbing wall. Sounds like the perfect mix, you know? History, culture, modern entertainment, something for everyone. So for anyone listening who's planning a trip to Belfast, what are your top tips? How can they make the most of the Titanic experience? Well, first things first, book your tickets for the Titanic Belfast Museum online. You'll avoid the queues and you can secure your preferred time slot. And think about getting a combination ticket, you know, one that includes entry to the other attractions like the SS Nomadic or the Titanic Dock and Pump House. Great advice. Great advice. How much time should people set aside for exploring the whole Titanic quarter? I'd say at least a full day, maybe even two, to really experience everything. The museum alone could easily take half a day, and then you've got the other attractions, plus the city of Belfast itself to explore. You've convinced me it's officially on my bucket list. You won't regret it, I promise. And as you explore everything, just remember to, you know, take it all in, not just the physical attractions, but the stories, the emotions they evoke. It's a powerful reminder, really, of human ingenuity, ambition, and, well, the fragility of it all. That's a beautiful way to put it. It sounds like a trip that will stay with you long after you've come home. Mm -hmm. 
Well, thank you so much for taking us on this deep dive into the Titanic experience in Belfast. It's been, well, incredibly insightful and inspiring. My pleasure, really. And to all our listeners, if you're looking for an experience that combines history, culture, and a bit of adventure, then Belfast and the Titanic Quarter should be right at the top of your list. Until next time, keep exploring.